Okay. Uh, hi guys. Good afternoon. I'm Daniel Souza. Thank you so much for joining us. Welcome to Dentistry Web class. It's a very special project of ours. And in the moment that the world is living a quarantine, we have to reinvent ourselves. <coughs> and I was thinking how we can connect the world. You know, how can we bring more information and how can we bring interaction uh, for a region? And I was thinking to connect people. And I dreamt about uh, to speak with a lot of for people, you know. And suddenly became this idea to create a design dance web class. It uh, at the moment was to create a short uh, project. But right now I realized that it's, it's get bigger than I was imagining. It's gonna be, get bigger than I am. And uh, it's a, a project that we can do it for the rest of our careers, you know. It's a project that we can connect people and bring the best uh, of the mentors, the best of the professors to give you information and class and technica, technicians. And so today we have a very special <coughs> presence of Dr. Josef Kunkela from Czech Republic. And I'm going to introduce him. He is graduating in the University of Faculty, the Charles University in Prague. And he has a second degree in Procedon Department and also in Republica Czech. And he get in a degree in Procedontics. And, and he's founder of the Kunkela uh, Training Center, also talking about digital dentistry. He's a mentor. He's also a beta tester of our company. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Kunkela. Welcome, and now it's your show. And sorry, and before we start, just for you to know, guys, we have here the presence of Dr. Uh, Daniela Ahio from Brazil and Dr. Leandro Passos. They are going to support us with your questions, okay? <coughs> thank you, Dr. Adani, thank you, Le. <coughs> and uh, now it's your turn, Dr. Josef, your show. Thank you so much. Welcome, guys. Welcome, okay, Master. Guys. <laughs> Good evening, good afternoon, depends on where you are. I'm more than happy to be invited to this meeting because I'm really, it's honor for me, especially if I have seen that how many people is connected to this meeting from around the world and make me nervous a bit, but let's go to my presentation. Uh, <clears throat> it, it's, it's really a strange time because then especially the, these meetings are a bit strange for me because I love the people interaction and always when I'm talking I'm looking for the pay, uh, to participants eyes to control if it's good topic or bad topic and it's really strange to talk to computer and I feel like uh, addicted to computer games or something like this because I have no response and thanks you thanks to this link with uh, Daniela, with uh, Andro. Hi, guys. <laughs> you support me to be like real life meeting because it's, uh, it's strange and it's really pity that I can be with you just now. <clears throat> Good. Uh, the, my topic is uh, the mind gap and it's about, uh, it's about evaluation. Uh, sorry, maybe I stopped the sharing. No. no, it's it's sharing. I can see your, your sharing. Class. Yeah, yeah, it works. Uh, <clears throat> the, my lecture is about uh, evaluating the gap between the restoration and uh, the preparation because a lot of things influence. And uh, I received like uh, the challenge to evaluate the one of the new milling unit which appear the beginning of this year on the market. It's, uh, the name is Serec Primal. And to be, to be behind this, uh, the evaluation, I tried to look to inverted perspective to evaluation because we are like under <clears throat> uh, like the control still the evaluating the how fast the milling unit is and how is the quality how is the precision how is the accuracy of the milling but i a little bit of change this perspective and focus to the factors 
like uh, the outside milling unit factors which evaluating the quality of precision of our restoration more than um, the milling unit alone. Uh, what I think that everything is about the preparation. Uh, each of us using different handpiece, each of us has a different uh, condition to bull collect because it's a really matter if you will prep with a uh, high speed hand pieces or turbine because the high speed hand pieces like electric hand pieces you can do with the lower speed with a high torque is definitely better than a turbine which uh, if your uh, tabul collect is not in a good condition and super high speed influence uh, the like the vibration on the tip of the bull very important thing is also the dentist mood because because we are the humans and each of us has a different condition each day different mood sometimes we are like uh, the happy and everything is okay and our hands is shaking sometimes we are, are not shaking sometimes we are after party and everything is more complicated and these small things influence the reality that each other preparation is different. Each second is, each tooth and each second minute is our preparation different. We are using different speed, we are using different bursts. And when the preparation is ready, a uh, very important thing is drawing the margin. We have the option to delegate our, uh, the scans to our dental technicians. But I highly recommend you never send to scan to dental technician before drawing the margin because you know how the preparation was in the mouth and exactly it's better to evaluate the margin on a scanner and you will be the best guy who can do right draw margin then we will speak about analyzing tools in inside the software because from my side this is one of the best tool inside the software which uh, teaching us to be better and help us to have a more precise restoration and of course we will speak about the parameters which influence the quality of the preparation and the fitting of the restoration and also i will show you the the one case the real challenges case uh, for the primal because I will show you the non-prep veneer, non-prep veneer case. Everything starts with uh, like explore, exploring uh, the margin uh, to, to show where the margin line, margin line is because without uh, the visibility of the margin, we can do scan, we can do conventional impression. You have to see the margin line. And our workflow is we are always beginning is very thin, as thin as possible, the retraction cord, which is uh, non-medicated, non-impregnant, and it's always black. And why black? Because it stayed during the final scanning in a sulcus. And thanks to color uh, scanners, we can better recognize where is the soft tissue, where is the margin of the preparation, where is the cord. Uh, and then we are starting with the preparation. But before the preparation is a very good uh, to speak about which kind of burrs we are using. We have uh, like usually the six types of the course, uh, the surface of our diamond burrs. And the first two like white and yellow is mainly for the polishing. If you would like to use them for the tooth preparation, you need a like high effort. It's not so fast. And also if you're not uh, the, like the cooling well, you can overheat the surface. That's why I guess the first and the really from my point of view, the best uh, instrument for the preparation is red strip instrument, instrument where is a 46 micrometers course of the diamond uh, the placed on the surface of the burr. Then it's optional, the medium course and the green one I mean 151 micron burr is also used from the dentist side for the preparation. Sure that in a 
like the stock, we can find also the black one. But believe me, the black one is uh, the enamel killer. And I will demonstrate how to look uh, the preparation with the black instrument on the pictures. Because we are doing till this time, this coronavirus situation, a lot of uh, international trainings and we are always asking participants uh, which birds they are starting or they are using for the preparation. And our internal statistic looks like 48 percent of participants using uh, this like non-colored the medium the medium instrument for the prepping then the green one then uh, the red one the red one only 11 percent a lot of dentists using for example at the beginning the green one and then in the end they are finishing or polishing with uh, with the red one but once you will start with the green one it's, uh, I think, is one of the worst things, and you will see, you will see why. The diamond course of the green one instrument is 151 microns. That means the only just the small diamond piece is a bigger than recommended, recommended gap between the restoration and your preparation. We will speak about it later. And this is how to look the preparation after, after green coated diamonds. You see a lot of grooves. You see not well like shaped the margin line with the, with the crack, with the, the many times happen that the part of enamel is taken out during the preparation. Depends on which part of the tooth you are prepping. And because, for example, in the crowns, we are going closer, closer to soft tissue, to the margin of gingiva. And there is an aprismatic animal. And aprismatic animal is less like uh, stabilized around the tooth than uh, in another part of the tooth. That easier than can be like the cracked or removed from the tooth surface. This is uh, how to look the medium. The medium one uh, sometimes is it's stripped. Uh, the blue one with the blue strip has a course of 107 micrometers. And it's definitely better. You can see the pictures how to look the two surface after this preparation. Sure, you can see the cracks on the margin. The grooves are not so big. But many times, for example, if you are not using uh, immediate dentin sealing after preparation, these cracks are responsible for later post-operative sensitivity. What is really not good that these cracks is this, they are invisible with the human eyes. And it's, that's why many times that happen that you follow all the protocols, you follow all the rules and the teeth can be still sensitive this is the one of the like the reason of other reasons why and the red one has a the diamond uh, diamond cost 46 microns only and this is how look the margin line and how to look the surface and now you see that how big difference is the instrument uh, which like the influence the quality of the margin how the how the big important is which kind of the instrument we will use because this is the really the more important that uh, which uh, like the type of the milling unit you will use because the all the milling units almost the all the milling units really the mill with a high quality compared to human preparation. Let's start to speak about. Uh, the analyzing the margin and at the beginning uh, when we finish the preparation I'm using the second core the second core is usually very thick in this case this is the Pascal International court with a number two and the thickness is uh, like very important because this cord is medicated and this kind of the core is medicated by aluminum sulfate and thanks the thickness of the cord absorbed a lot of aluminum sulfate uh, sulfate i can do really good um, 
uh, hemostasia and also retraction of the soft tissue of the sulcus. And we are placed only like a scarf. I can use because of uh, the broadcasting it has is usually delay and it's not a good friend with uh, with uh, the videos. It's only the picture from the video. It's also why the picture is not so high quality because it's picture from the video. But it's after the placement of the second cord, the situation look like this. And then when we are removing the cord, you can see that we have uh, sufficiently exposure to the margin line. You can see where is uh, the button of the sulcus because there is a black cord and you can see also where is the soft tissue. And after that, we can have a same condition our scan. And in the same condition, if you are still the analog dentist, you can do uh, your like conventional, conventional impression. Very important thing is position of the margin. A lot of softwares placed uh, the margin line from insertion axis view. And that's mean it's usually like on the top. It's not on the real margin and it's, it's a little bit up to margin. And we have to carefully evaluate this position of the margin because for example, like in this case, if the margin line, for example, is a little bit inside the preparation, I think this position of the margin is responsible of this results of the restoration because sometimes can happen also that your the, the like the melt restoration is not fit perfect and it's a little bit like inside the preparation. And that's why, that's why this part of evaluation of the margin is very important and you have to fix it. And then the margin line in this position is in the right seated. That's why I highly recommend you that you have to do the margin line placement. Don't delegate it to your dental technicians. Your dental technicians, they are very skilled, but they are not prepping the teeth. We are dentists, we are prepping the teeth, and we are the best person for the margin placement. I have already spoken about this uh, analyzing tools. The first analyzing tool inside the software is distance to antagonist, but for the evaluation of the margin is not like important tool, that's why I will skip it, to undercuts, evaluation to undercuts. We are living in an era that we would like to be minimum invasive and and when we are the minimum invasive, we increasing the bond, that's mean minimum invasive, maximum bond. And the best situation is when we will stay in enamel because the enamel bonding strength is totally different than the denting bonding strength. But once we would like to stay in enamel and don't wanna be like a serial pulp killer with a very big shoulder preparation like one millimeter and that's i think it's better to stay in enamel but we have to control our undercuts because especially around the neck the thickness of the enamel is very thin sometimes it's about 0 0.2 or 0 0.3 and if you will prep 0 0.3 and your undercuts will be according uh, this scale where you can see for example this case is 0 0.1 undercuts the result is that software will block along the undercuts and the final restoration thickness will be not 0 0.3 but 0 0.2 because it will be minus uh, 0 0.1 because the block in the undercuts and they think that things are unvisible in a software. And that's why sometimes happen that the restoration crack during the milling process. And you are like super angry to milling unit because it cracks and that's, you know, that's mean you lost the block and the block, the cost. And that's why I think you can be more predictable if you will control with that tool, the undercuts to avoid potential, potential problems. Another very important thing is the margin evaluation. Now we have here only the warning, the orange warning. And thanks this orange warning, you can better understand when, where the margin is not good. And 
for us, it's easy situation because we are digital dentists. Our patient is usually still on a chair. We are on a time with our patient with our scan. And you can go back to your software. You can just crop this small part, improve this small piece in a month, and rescan only this small window which was the cropped and now repaired with a more smoother, smoother movement. Because if you will uh, like avoid this evaluation, can happen the situations like this that the whole part of the enamel can be cracked and they can happen during the preparation but if the shoulder is not sufficiently smooth can happen after dry trying or maybe later uh, after the function of our restoration and that's why there sometimes the restoration looks like that yeah this means it's this is like the partially open margin which is responsible for a lot of a lot of problems in the future and the last analyzing tool is uh, evaluation of the surface because the all adhesive adhesively bonded restoration that's mean or the etched restoration are sensitive to sharp margins and avoid the uh, some uh, potential cracks uh, because of the sharp margin we have to make it our restoration very smooth remove all the sharp things and again the same workflow you will only the crop the part where is this sharp margin and the smooth many times it's enough if you will smooth with a disc and uh, just avoid uh, the problems with the crack of the restoration because what's happened on our proposal? In our proposal, you will see like over melt part inside the crown, where, when there will be the sharp edge. And this over melt part, is internal part of our restoration, it's more fragile and the potential cracks can appear, can appear faster. Sure, the parameters really influence also the fitting of our restoration, but the number one important like parameters how we will when we will start is the preparation because you can see here we adapted like uh, spacer 80 microns uh, radial and occlusal but if your preparation is very smooth without the undercuts without the sharp margin you can like to go down to 60 or 70 microns but if you are not spending too much time with the smoothing your preparation uh, you are not using magnification for the preparation 80 microns is a killer because you will never fit your restoration well that's mean you have to go up that's why exists like the common common parameters and the parameters which you have adapted according to your preparation. I have already mentioned about this challenge, the evaluating two milling units, this MCXL and uh, CEREC Primal uh, from Dance by Serona. I have used uh, six uh, different kind of the blocks for the, this evaluation and on the beginning I have to say one important thing. Because more than, uh, more than 40 years exists something like unofficial guidelines of the fitting of the restoration from ADDA. This is from 1978 and everything like starts from 25 microns. This is why from not to zero. It's not from the zero because you need a space for the looting material. For in a previous era, it was uh, conventional cements like zinc, oxide, uh, zinc oxide phosphate or carboxylate uh, cements and uh, now we are using more like adhesive cements like uh, the resin cements uh, light cured dual cured and that's why it's enough to start with the 20 microns but the 40 microns it's really nightmare 40 microns is very, very, very low, and you can see it's happened in 1978. Uh, academic prosthodontics, uh, like uh, unofficially recommended that acceptable range is from 90 to 120 microns, 
in different researches. And you can find also different scientific articles where it's uh, like the limit 70 microns, 120 microns, 100 microns. How I mentioned, doesn't exist a re real, real like uh, official guideline. But if you will be between this 20 to 120 microns, that's super good. But for your imagination, when we are talking about 20 and 120 microns, we are talking about the thickness of the human hair. Each of us and each country, and now we are connected from different countries, in each part of the country has the people with a different thickness of the human hair. Because for example, in uh, like the north part of, uh, of our planet, uh, has the people like a thinner, a thinner hair because it's not necessary to cover the scalp against the sun because the sun is not so strong. But if you have a look at you, Alejandro hairs, I think definitely he will have like 180, maybe more. But this is, this is the real, the, like the average. Daniel, what do you think about it? <laughs> Daniel is not connected to all you're, the you're, rest. You're right, Michele, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Dan really. Daniel is not well protected, but it's another, it's another topic. Okay, <laughs> but just for your Im imagination, this is like our, like the ranch where we can walk with precision of our restoration. And now let's go to evaluate the milling units. This is the magnification of the margin of like in vitro measurement, the prep tooth with the red boar. And this is how fit uh, the Celtra Duo with MCXL. And this is the gap. And you can see we like uh, measured 10 different kind of teeth and different preparation and, and different, like five different part of the single tooth. And there was the range between 33 to 52. Uh, uh, this is, but I can see that because the picture is covered with the picture. Yeah, this is uh, Celtra Duo and this is the Primal. And Primal is a little bit more precise with a 19 to 39. And let's look at the Emacs. This is uh, the Emax uh, melt uh, with uh, M6L. And you can see like the chipping here and another teeth. And look at the gap, the gap is 46 to 59. And compare with the primal, the precision is better, 26 to 45, but still, is here cracks and chips. And this is what I think that uh, this lithium desilicate is a not so good choice, if I say politely, for all milk restoration. Because we have found on the, like lithium desilicate material an old tooth, this microchipping everywhere. Uh, it's on a milled restoration. I know there exists the breast option, on the breast option is more clear, but to milling uh, the, the lithium desilicate is uh, the worst thing on the really good preparation. True is that it's un usually it's invisible with the human eyes, but you have to know that, and you have to know that the all the restoration uh, from lithium desilicate has this open, open gap. Here is a ceric block. This is uh, the felspathic ceramic from MCXL. And the gap was between 23 to 51. And the same material milled with the primal. And it was between 23 to 36. Anemic, like a hybrid ceramic uh, milled from MCXL. And you can see 31, 47 and primal 23 to 37 because this material has a high model of elasticity that's why it's easier to melt the restoration 
And the composite material, this is the Brilliant Creos in M6 cell 2741 and Primal 15 to 37 and uh, zirconia material, Katana STML blocks. This is milled in M6, M6 cell 2839 and look at Primal 19 to 21. That's why is the katana like max like this is this is the average uh, average this is the the everest of the precision because we can be we can go lowest because 19 it's like almost the limit and if you will go more up the margin will be more open that's mean i think this uh, zirconia material fit the perfect on a, on a, on a our preparation uh, because of it's prepped bigger and because it, the material is a soft because it's presented before the milling that's why this results and you can see that if the your restoration it's a milled with this uh, the amazing machine and your preparation it's prepped smoothly with the red strip instrument i think the result can be very predictable and really great. This is about the surface comparison between two milling units. And you can see that the primal milling unit has a deeper fissure and looks more anatomical than M6L. And the surface, between the surfaces, it's not so big difference. But what you can see with this uh, SIM, the pictures, that all the millet restorations, which we will do, it doesn't matter which milling unit, has the open surface. And the open surface has to be like covered, has to be sealed. And it's not enough if you will place only uh, the glaze over your restoration, because the glaze uh, can be, after the, each bite cycling, removed after two or three years, depends on uh, consistency of the glaze, it depends on the thickness of the glaze. And especially an occlusion surface can be like very fast removed from the surface during two, three, four years. And then this like exposure to surface of ceramic can be infiltrated with all the liquids inside the human mouth. And when they're going inside the ceramic, like not uh, polished ceramic, uh, the liquids can destroy, can destroy the material. That's why it can happen also like uh, other cracks and other defects on our ceramic surface. That's why I highly recommend you to polish each your restoration. And if you would like to like to do some optical illusions of any layers or something like that you can do that with the glaze definitely sometimes you have to improve aesthetic on monolithic restoration sure but always the beginning with uh, the polishing then you can glaze and after that many times and of course depends of the material depends of the glaze many times the glaze material is too much shiny we are using the polishing also to reduce the glossy, the high shine of material to be more natural. And this is the scale of the one of the, my favorite uh, uh, the manufacturer from Dash Shine. You can use like different course of the, the polishing, the ceramics. They are really very good for the composite, also for semi ceramics, and I highly recommend it. Uh, for the finishing and polishing the surface. This is a sign picture of the real uh, the human enamel. And you can see that, that still there are the grooves, but the grooves are the smooth. The surface, it's not like uh, the window. It's not uh, like uh, super, super smooth. It has uh, these natural grooves, natural ledges, but polished and this is this is importance number one all this similarity can happen with our burrs on a milling unit 
because the surface, each, each surface of our restoration has these small grooves can happen thanks to uh, the milling cycles. And it's a great visible, for example, here on this composite restoration. And it's also what is very, very great visible here also how sharp edge you can see it's melt with, uh, with the milling unit compared to human preparation. Uh, it is a whole, whole area. Here is measured like between 15 to 37 microns, the gap between two restorations. Uh, maybe you are uh, very like uh, <laughs> not satisfied with this uh, SI pictures because these pictures drive us crazy because you know this magnification is a real nightmare. But once you will go closer to details and not only to the teeth, you can see super like interesting things. For example, like this flea. I don't know if you have ever been bitten by flea, but look at how to look uh, the teeth or the flea if you want the magnified. It's dangerous. You can see that this one has a, I don't know, it's caninus or second, it's lateral incisor, but it has a crack. Maybe it's ready for the micro restoration. Same things with the ant. Have you know, do you know that the ant has uh, the hairy eyes? Let's go closer to beautiful animal and you can see these details. It's really fantastic. This is, I think, the great thing is sometimes not be focused too much to teeth because it's really, it's without a microscope, you will definitely will sleep better. But sometimes we have not answered question why our restorations uh, the, like uh, has the postoperative sensitivity or the cracks or any other problems. Now I would like to show you uh, the case where we made like uh, non-prep veneers. Uh, we used one of our like the biocopy biocopy uh, concept. The name was the stretch, and was this the stretch concept? The stretch concept is that we have, for example, the patient uh, which has a diastema tremors, and with the patient has the beautiful beautiful tooth surface or teeth surfaces. And we only the scan the surface, make it wider. That means we stretch the patient natural surface and use like um, like a veneer, very thin veneer over. True is that we can offer to patient also another treatment. For example, direct composite. Sure, definitely. I don't want to be too much uh, like uh, with a, with a over treatment with a cat cam angry eyes to everything prepped, but we offer the patient to do uh, like a non-prep case, that's mean which can be repaired and removed if something happened. And what, why we don't use the, like direct composite, because we can copy the surface and also we have to adjust the, the incisor guidelines because the one part is not well prepared uh, for the function here in this case. Look at, the, look at this case, the, the lady is suffering and from my eyes, this, uh, the smile is beautiful without zero touching because to have a gap between the teeth, it's absolutely okay. Uh, look at Madonna, she's a pop star more than 20 years and she always explained how her gap between the teeth is super sexy. That means if the people are suffering because of studying, it's better help them, but it's not like my first choice to do this kind of the treatment. Look at the case for a 45 degree and you can see this beautiful surface, beautiful edges, uh, the ledges from both sides, texture. And that's why we use it and we like to place over our scan the, the initial shape of the tooth and after we stretch the tooth uh, by tooth. Here is a picture with uh, a face scan, with 3D face scan, which is integrated uh, into the software like STL. We used uh, gingiva mask catalog, that's why the patient is red. 
It's not because of uh, the skin, but because of Jinjaima catalog. And here is uh, like the static view because the, uh, the video doesn't work well. Uh, his static view of the checking the function because once we will do uh, the patient mock-up, the prototype, it's not only about the aesthetic, it's also about the function. At the evaluation of the all protrusion, lateral protrusion, it's highly important to avoid some problems later. And the software includes the articulation. You can adjust individual articulation or you can use uh, the average values, but it's better than nothing, the average values. And each improvement of uh, the protrusion and each evaluation of protrusion, lateral protrusion, like give you like uh, the feedback back that your restoration will be more predictable than before. Uh, the mocha production. Uh, I believe that all of you know this conventional mockup thanks to uh, digital wax up printed uh, design and the cover uh, 3D printed model with uh, the solid uh, silicone material or with bisacryl to fill it and do the mock-up. But especially for veneers, from my point of view, the millet mock-up is more predictable because if you will look to the each veneer from the side, you will recognize better to all the details. It's not sealed, especially a proximal area, and it's more predictable to look at the margin from the side and avoid some like non uh, covered parts of the tooth. And here is uh, the mock up uh, trying in a, in a patient mouth. And here's uh, the detail. I'm sorry, here is a video, but I don't know if uh, the video has a no, not delay. How to video, how to video look. Once the patient is satisfied with our mock-up proposal, and especially I prefer to send the patient at home for uh, the functional evaluation and for family evaluation. Because the one thing is if the patient is stressed on a, on a chair with a mirror or with a picture which you will do, and you ask, it's a good, it's a good, just let me know. The best evaluation is the family, the boyfriend, uh, uh, the, the husband, uh, everybody has a different, different view to aesthetic is a better send a patient at home for functional evaluation and also for other person evaluation. And when everybody is satisfied, many times happen that it's not necessary to change uh, the shape and we only like the changing the material. And in this case, and always I recommend you if you will do a uh, non-prep case, I highly recommend you to use the composite for veneer. Because with a non-prep veneer, you can be very thin, like 0 0.1, 0 0.2 millimeters, and uh, you can avoid the cracks on the margin. And you can do after endless polishing of your restoration between the tooth and the restoration. Because with a ceramic, you can do that. Can cracks appear on the margin? And also later, if you would like to polish, to transition between a restoration and a tooth, always appear the small cracks can be visible after one month, two months, like pigmentation round. And it's like never ending story that you will polish and another like small cracks can appear. That's why the composite is better for non-prep cases. Sure, for endoveneers, the ceramic materials is it's a perfect. But what I also recommend you to place the sprue on an incisal part, incisal edge, because the default setting of the, all the milling units is here on the neck. But we always have to place uh, the sprue on the thicker part avoid the crack during the milling, especially if you will mill so thin restoration like this one is. Here's a picture of uh, the millet, millet veneers. And here's a detail for on one millet, millet veneer. You can see the margin is really very clear without, without uh, the cracks. 
and here is a dry in. Uh, to try and, and also the like the final bonding or looting depends on which material you will use. Uh, we are always doing with the rubber dam, and the rubber dam is here not only because of dry field, but we have a lot of new um, adhesive adhesives which accept uh, the like a small amount of humidity, but here the rubber dam is to exposure uh, the margin between restoration and the tooth and like allow you to do the maximum cleaning of uh, resin cements around. Because if you have uh, like exposure margin, you have sufficient time for the cleaning and I think you will avoid the situation that you can leave the small amount of the cement in a sulcus. Because if stay the cement in a sulcus, and that it's like it happen always, the small inflammation later, and you can almost can remove this rest because once you will touch after the soft tissue, inflammated soft tissue, the bleeding appear again faster. That's why I think the, from my side, the rubber dam is best tool for the cleaning margin of the restoration because if your margin will be well cleaned without zero irritation, this transparent uh, material which we are using for the looting or boarding, then uh, I think you will have also not all, only the white aesthetic, uh, also the pink aesthetic beauty uh, in your case. And we are always adapting tooth by tooth. And because if you will adjust the one single tooth, you have sufficient time to green around and then you can place another one. You can see from the side view, and this is how to look after the healing. You can see that the soft tissue is perfectly adapted without, without inflammation. And this is the thanks to Rabadan because the rubber dam gives you this option that clean well the restoration around, uh, around the whole tooth. Uh, you can see also the shape, the ledges, which is copied from the, from the patient's surface. And here is uh, the view, the detail with, you, you can see here also the transparency. You can do like, we have two options how to play with a transparency in a composite veneer. You can reduce veneer from the palatal surface and if the thinner the margin, you can also like to remove uh, and the, to, to, like uh, to design the mammalons with this reduction, reduction, then transparency is visible only because of the thickness of the restoration. And another option is very easy to use is do just the gentle cutback on the incisal edge and place the composite, transparent composite material on the incisal edge. Like if you are doing intraoral direct restoration in the mouth. And just the polish after and that's it. I guess that the composites going forward more and more uh, compared to ceramic, not because of the aesthetic, because I guess the aesthetic, you have to invest a lot of time for finishing and polishing ceramic, uh, ceramic composites to avoid some like color changing in the future. But you have to invest the time also to ceramic. But why I love the composite is, this is like my investment for the better future sleeping because to repair the composite is easier than repair ceramic if something happened. If you be super precise, if you can do the, everything uh, with the leg artist, the workflow can happen in a very deep carrier, smaller, uh, like uh, endo, endo overlays uh, later, can happen uh, post sensitivity and Sometimes you have to do endo treatment. If you repair uh, endo treated, if you repair endo treated tooth where was the only or uh, the inlay with the composite, you can use the same material like a direct restoration, and the hole is invisible. Or if happen, for example, small crack somewhere 
on a composite veneer, you can repair it like a direct composite, but it's very complicated to repair the ceramic restoration if something, something happened. Here's uh, the stop it video, sorry for that, before and after. Uh, here's uh, the, like, the closer detail uh, how to restoration looks, how it was before and after, and how the restoration looks in a, in a patient mouth. This part was like uh, the one part of the, the masterclass which we offer uh, like the whole the process of anterior CAT CAM, CAT CAM restoration. And like a teaser, I would like to show you another, another part of uh, research where we uh, like uh, continuing with research, with the research because we have, we measured the gap between, between the restoration and the uh, tooth preparation, but this is not a final situation. We are using diluting materials. Uh, we are like uh, the measure how works our resin cement in a gap. And for this case, I like ask to students of the program of dentistry to prep the teeth. We use the green instrument because, because the green instruments is more often uh, for the preparation. We use the human teeth in vitro preparation. And uh, we used uh, lithium desilicate Emax material because what I know, this is the uh, like uh, the most used material on the market. Um, I hope after this pre presentation, you will think more about, about the results of the milling and you will look at it uh, like a recommendation or the choosing material in different perspective. Uh, look at how to the margin looks the sealed margin with uh, resin cement if you remove uh, resin cement after 10 second curing time. This is what was like, uh, what I expect that they will happen, but you will never have a chance to see it live. Because if you procured how a lot of companies recommend 10 second or six second, and then remove because of gel stage the material from the circles. Many, many times happen that material is not well cured in a deep. And because you are also circling with the curing clamp during this 10 second, that means this 10 second is not on one place. And that's why the it happened the situation like that. And in an SI microscope, you can see big holes between the restoration, each restoration is here, there's a big chipping, again here, you can see the tooth preparation margin, it's good, here's uh, uh, the primer on the tooth surface, and you can see here is not well cured, uh, the resin cement which was uh, removed from, from the circles that this is another thing which really uh, which is really our nightmare, What's, what can happen after looting, because we, if we design the teeth or your dental technician designed the teeth, you spend a lot of time with, them, with the preparation and then only like not well uh, continuing, continuing with, uh, with the removing, with, with like, uh, the working with a resin cement can be responsible for really disaster disaster situations and mar like the pigments around and debonding or or uh, sensitivity of the tooth and which uh, like I mentioned this is like the teaser because we're comparing like a different workflow when you can remove start to remove the resin resin cement and how you can polish. Uh, the gap because many times we are very close uh, to root with a cement and cement is very soft and if you are using for example the aggressive diamond burr for adjustment the rest of the resin cement you can do easier to grooves to the cement and a lot a lot a lot of things uh, influence that okay guys that's all thank you very much
Muchas gracias. Muito obrigado to my Brazilian and Portuguese friends. Uh -huh. And uh, I would like to say it was the great to be here with you, but you are not here. <laughs> Dr. Jorge, uh, <laughs> thank you so much. But you have questions. And uh, before you go, let's check. Yeah. Uh, because there is some question that I did not know the answer. So we are still on the track. So the first guy okay. that we are going to open for the question, it's Adam Bilski. Just give me a second. I'm going to open the chat to Adam so he can talk to you. Just give me a second. Adam. Adam. Adam uh, Bilski. You are, you are going to be allowed to talk, you know? Uh, sure, sure. Okay, now Adam, I think you are alive you and you can uh, talk direct to doctor. Adam, you can do the question. Oh, Adam, just give me a second. Let me, it's Adam, Adam, Adam Bilski. Oh, he's not, he's not on the, 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 the oh, chat anymore. Can. Hello, hello. Hello, Adam. Oh, Adam oh. is there. <laughs> Hello. Um, so my question was, first of all, great lecture, doctor, as always. Hi, Adam. Hi, Adam. <laughs> I wanted to ask, because you mentioned when you were talking about the burrs, um, you mentioned that the yellow burr, uh, when we prepare with it initially, there's more overheating to the tooth surface than with the other burrs. And I was wondering if that's the same situation with, for example, using the red burr, um, I mean, for example, the green one as to more overheating. Yeah, yeah. If uh, we have the bitter diamond cores, I think it's it's a sharper and this reduction is a faster because you are doing the bigger grooves. That means if uh, the material with the diamond is a smoother, you have to a little bit press more and uh, like uh, prep more. That's why that's a bit increasing the heating. But if you will use uh, like 100% heating uh, and uh, like use sufficient water, water cooling, I think it's not so big if issue, this overheating. But from my point of view, this uh, yellow one is more for polishing. It's not for, it's not for Further. preparation. Mm -hmm. I, I see, I understand. In this, okay. in, this time, in this time, I think a lot of dentists are afraid about the aerosol and you, a lot of dentists reducing the aerosol or they are staying home and not prepping. Mm -hmm. And I think it's the cooling, the cooling of the other hand pieces. Now we are evaluating with the I other see. perspective because of, because of contaminated aerosol. Okay. Thank, okay, thank, thank you very much. Adam, thank you for your participation. Now we have a question for uh, Ian Goldberg. Ian, I'm going to yes, allow I you see. to talk. Uh, Ian? I see. So what about the press? Yes. Uh, what about the press. Yeah, this is why I mentioned. The press, uh, the lithium desilicate for the press is a different story. It's not milled. The millet, millet materials, as, as much as softer they are during the milling, you have the better results with the with the margin. Uh, I think this is the like the results of the lithium desilicates are because of milling because this material is very strong uh, for the milling. The press is a different story. With the press, you can have uh, the beautiful sharp sharp margin. Okay, now we have a question for Thank you, Doug. Where katana zircona millet on uh, for this restoration yeah the my speed is always about like uh, you mean the speed of speed of uh, centering maybe maybe the uh, speed of uh, centering. Pegina, uh, you are now of, uh, allowed to ask your question live if you want to okay are you there hi there can you hear me Yes, we can hear. Yes. Welcome. Thank you. Perfect. Thanks. Um, yeah, I know that the prime mill has a super fast milling um, option for zirconia. 
currently for Katana and the Cerex Zirconia. I was just wondering for those two, um, were they milled on the super fast setting or was it just the, the regular? Yes, uh, all my restoration are milled regular because I am not like the fan of Formula One dentist. I prefer to like invest this five, six minutes to my milling unit uh, to mill better, to mill better to margin than to be super fast. Really, I know that exists this, this tool that you can be really fast and you can use the, fi uh, the, the speed milling process, but you know, I always like looking to this problem with the patient perspective. If I will have the patient on a chair and I will ask him, hey, uh, do you have a five minute more time for a regular milling process when we can be more precise and the results can be more predictable or you have not five minutes, I will can go to the like uh, super speed and potential, potential micro cracks can be there, you know? I think everybody will answer, give the material five minutes more. But sometimes we are super rush and we are losing time with another workflow. And I, maybe my answer now will be a little like longer, but it's a very good example is, uh, for example, what's happened in a, in a Houston airport. It's like almost 10 years old, the story where they opened the, the new airport there. And uh, a lot of people, a lot of passengers complaining the waiting time for the luggages on the luggages belt. Because the average time in the US, it's like 10 minutes waiting for the luggages when uh, I think it's no storm or turbulence in the air. It's, it's a regular, a good time. It's like 10 minute waiting time uh, of uh, average. And the people, complaining because the time was like 12 or 30 minutes and they started thinking about how to solve the problem and they put the more human sources that mean that more the people care about take it out luggages from the airplane and put it to the belt and also like uh, inc like increase the speed and they was almost the 10 minutes like other airports but the people still complaining, still complaining, and they don't know why, but one guy look at the problem from another perspective, and he changed uh, this like uh, problematic flights to gate, which was like so far as to, to build uh, transport with the luggage that people are waiting for, and the people not, not waiting close to belt, but they spend a time with the waiting, walking from the gate to the belt. And they walk, was, time was the same, but they almost not waiting because uh, the luggage is circling on the belt when they coming. But the time was the same. And this is the story. It's not about two minutes, three minutes, fast milling, longer milling. It's about our workflow what we can what we can like how we can adjust the things like positioning the, the patient prepare the patient and it's and exactly the to tell the patient exact times when we'll be ready i don't know how it's in another countries but in our country when i offer the patient to give him restoration during two hours they are more than happy because before it was like 14 days but once I will tell them it will be during the one hour and I will be late like 10 minutes. They will complain that, hey, the, hey doc, it's 10, you are 10 minutes late. But it's the same like this belt on the airport. Okay, doctor, thank you so much. We have another question from Felipe. So Felipe Amesquita, you now are available to ask your question live, please. Felipe? Felipe Mesquita? Yeah, I'm here. Yes, thank you so much. You can do your question, thank you. Hi, greetings, Daniel, and thank you, Dr. Kunkela, for this great lecture. 
And my question is similar to the one before me. Is, uh, is there another different set of bars for the prime mill? And which set of bars do you use for both cases, prime mill and MCXL, for milling the, the katana block? Yeah, I used uh, like a dry, dry milling process. Not the grinding, not the wet, was like uh, the, um, the dry milling process with the carbide burst. Okay, okay so the, the, same, the same set of burrs as this yes. is the... Yeah. Yes, just, just, the, just the dry, dry milling. Because with the dry milling, you can use this, uh, uh, the, the carbide, the carbide burst, and there is now the one in primer is one, uh, the extra fine, extra fine uh, bur more. That your fissures can, and also the texture can be like more realistic, more anatomical. Instead of the finisher ten. Yes. Yeah. Now there are three, uh, the burst for uh, the dry milling of zirconia. You can use extra okay, fine, you. extra fine milling process. Okay, thank, thank you, doctor. Okay, thank you. Now we have a question for Andrew Spoldit. Please, Andrew. Now you are here, Andrew. Uh, now you are allowed to ask your question live. Thank you, Andrew. Welcome. Are you there, Andrew Spoldit? I do believe that he's not here anymore. Uh, so go for uh, we go for the next question is Dr. Christian Abad. Dr. Christian, let, let, uh, here we are. Now, Chris, you are allowed to do your question live. Please feel yourself comfortable. Chris Abad, are you there? Okay, I, do, I don't think that he's there. So next but question. Maybe, maybe I can answer because the questions are same like uh, text here and can be faster. Okay, so please do. If I can read it. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, how are you? Oh, great. Great, <laughs> who is speaking? Yeah. Uh, Hi, Chris. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you for much. joining. Joseph, Danny, Leandro, Hello. great Hello. lecture. Thanks for sharing your brilliant participation. My pleasure. Joseph, I, it's just in order to, to make research. Uh, do, you, do you think that the, the milling machine bars affect the fitting of the, the restoration? Of I course. Mean, you change the, the first one and second one? Yes, yes. Uh, I think in this evaluation, I used for the each new, uh, like, uh, 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 the, like the research model, the research tooth, the new bourses. That means it's, I try to be fair to each material and we change uh, the diamonds, burrs in a milling unit, each one, new one for each setup of the new material to have a, a really exactly the same condition. And it's, it's true. If you have uh, the new burst inside a milling unit, the results are better than if you have uh, the old one, especially the harder material like uh, lithium desilicate or silicate enforced with zirconia. This kind of material are really hard. And uh, if your burst inside a milling unit are not in a good condition, and also if um, the, like the cooling, uh, the water tank, it's not sufficiently filled and added with, uh, with the Dentatec, can appear faster the crack and uh, the chipping on a, milling in, on a restoration surface than without. That's when we used previ in previous time lithium desilicate materials, I increased the ratio in Dentatec, for example, to 200 milliliters in one water tank 
because also you will reduce the noise of the milling unit and you will reduce potentially chipping around the margin, but still the material is super hard for the milling. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Thank you. Good to see you guys. Thank you. Bye-bye. Now we have our next question, Dr. Andrew Reda. Andrew, now you are allowed, uh, no, here, Andrew, now you are allowed to do your question live. Please, you're live, Dr. Andrew Reda. Andrew? Would you like to uh, uh, answer the question, Dr. Joseph? Andrew, what type of cement did you use either the Milan mock-up? Um, I used uh, I used just the regular composite in a, in a, like a, in a syringe like flow composite. Okay. Now we have next question from Philip Visa. Which material do you use for Miller mock-up? Uh, PMMA material, polymetal metacrylate, very cheap, easy to polish. It's very flexible. You can easy to to mill very thin material uh, without without the chipping. It's uh, you can use you can use in a disc PMMA aesthetic materials or in a, in a block uh, different temporary temporary Hello? materials. Hello, who's talking? And uh, Dr. Andrew. Uh, Andrew, Andrew. Uh, thank you so much for uh, coming. Uh, thank you. Would you like thank to you so much question? for the yeah thank you so much uh, professor Conkella, for the great lecture as usual uh, i was I'm asking sure. about uh, the <laughs> the pmma the mock up uh, do you use a special type of um, a cement for the try in or uh, for the only flow composite or for the mock up yeah for flow composite it's fixed with a flow composite the mock up yeah Okay, and then it's easy for in the removal without etching, without bonding, or you. you yeah, I etch just the, just the, on a, on an enamel, just the, maybe one spot, one spot, and I sandblast internal part of PMMA to like uh, to achieve uh, adhesive surface, and okay. then the like the bond. But it's it's placed only in a central central labial part, just the spot like two three yeah. millimeters diameter around okay thank you so much and do you have a special protocol in in the finishing of the preparation after the red stone or do you use a, the normal protocol uh for the finishing red... for finishing the margin uh i i think uh, depends on where is located it's uh, if if i am in an enamel or in a if i am in a prismatic enamel I'm like combining this uh, rotation instrument, standard rotation instrument in a handpiece or uh, enamel chisel, like the manual sharpening of the margin. Exist also the ultrasonic instruments for that case, but I'm not using the ultrasound, but because I'm a little bit afraid about, about uh, this vibration, which can also be responsible for potential cracks of aprismatic enamel but if you are using with a low power you can use the ultrasound also but i have not experience with that i'm using the classic rotation instrument in a handpiece and the manual manual enamel chisel thank you so much okay thank you man thank you uh before we answer the question of david vera we have two questions it's i think it's very similar subject that we are talking right now it's ali he asking did you composite stains to draw Radiolescence, radi radiolescence. Uh, but not in this case. But also, you can you can exist the special colors, the stains, uh, shades which you can add, and then you can you have to seal it uh, with. Uh, also, exist something like the glaze to the composite for the sealing. But uh, I, I usually prefer to less less color and more translucency and uh, to do like uh, the halo effect with uh, the real material with like with the body of the material if you change like uh, the thickness of material and if you, you reduce the thickness and to prep the mamelons manually you can then put inside 
uh, transparent composite. But I guess it's better to come for uh, the, like the live demonstration training. <laughs> okay. Uh, we have one more question for Federico Murillo. The last case of anterior veneers, what was the material that you use? Ceramic or composite? Uh, the, like a, the permanent material, but it's funny but because nothing is permanent. Everything is temporary. Only dent is talking with materials that they have temporary and permanent. But like this permanent material, I use the composite. Okay. Now we have David Vera. He's asking, how did you integrate the facial scanning? Yeah, uh, we used uh, like the face scanner with uh, like uh, the file is the object file. And then we converted the object file to STL and uploaded to STL into InLab software. Unfortunately, it's impossible to upload to Serex software because not allow you to upload the STL files, but the InLab software is very similar with more options, with more tools, but you can upload like STL, the face scan to InLab. But it's about converter exists. Uh, like 10 or 12 different converters between OBG to STL, you can easily use it. Okay, thank you. The problem question. is that it's mono monocolor. Then the scan, if you will change it to, through the STL, it's monocolor. Okay, here we have an anonymous attendee. Uh, thank you for a great presentation. What kind of material do you mostly use in an interior and also in posterior region for the crowd restoration? What material do you prefer for own legs? Don't you use Emax card at all? Thank you. No, no, I'm don't using don't using the Emax, and for anteriors, but for for posteriors mostly uh, katana HTML, and for anteriors uh, depends on like the color of the of the abutment. If I have the vital tooth, I like, uh, for example, Empress Multi material or Serec block, this multi layer, or doesn't matter which kind of leucid or, or uh, phosphatic ceramic. And if it's darker and uh, I have the option to do, or it's, I'm like to able to do internal bleaching, and it's sufficient bleached, then I can again use uh, the phosphatic or leucid. And if not, I use also uh, Katana HTML. You know, because compared to compared to Emacs, it's a higher aesthetic. You can use multicolor. Uh, it's uh, more details you can mail on a surface and also on on a more anatomical on a fissure and the margin is uh, more sharper. All advantages, I guess that Emacs was the previous era, was a very good material and now we have the more aesthetic, more modern material, uh, stronger and uh, like better fitting of the our preparation. That's why we skipped Emacs in our, from our, uh, the protocol. Uh, Dr. Alan Smal, uh, where do you use the bond to bond the millet mock-up veneers? Why do you use the bond to millet? I think that's way, what, which way do you use the, uh, to bond the millet mock-up? Which kind of? Which kind of? But in this case, in this case, we use uh, preheated, preheated composite. Because this preheated composite has a, again another advantages, especially for inlays, onlays, and veneers. Uh, why preheated composite? Because it's you have the more choices with the color which you can use, like uh, the base for your veneer, and uh, potentially if you have any small gaps, small like uh, cracks or small chippings this uh, real restorative material can seal the margin better. It's also easier to remove before the curing. 
it's uh, it's more clear it's like uh, has better stability during dry trying the neighbor veneer to be sure that you are in exact position a lot a lot of advantages but the, but the most important is the temperature the preheated composite have to be preheated to 68 degree because if you use the less temperature of the composite then uh, i think it's you can never press uh, the restoration to the exact right position where you should be the restoration thank you doctor now next question from bianca after polish and glaze if you have to adjust occlusal points do you glaze again or just polish uh, after polish and glaze if you adjust the occlusal points do you glaze or just the polish we are uh, we are using uh, we are like using this uh, the checking the occlusion uh, before polishing and when we like the check occlusion with a uh, amount of the points three for posterior two for premolars single for anterior teeth then we just finish the polishing the polishing uh, but it's about like it's about real uh, real training it's hard to describe how exactly you will stay with uh, with the contact points but we are also always to checking before and like during the trying and also the after it's the same like with the contact points it's not only to to have a like a, in a teeth like an approximate approximate box oh, but cool. first try in is with non polished restoration okay from uh Hohti gupta which material is preferred for bonding for a non prep veneer yeah i already already answered this question uh yeah it's uh, like regular adhesive system because uh, that case in that case was not exposure dentin was uh, the enamel everywhere it's very easy that's why i for example use this like uh, two bottles system because uh, i can select it my bonding when the dentin is exposure is a different protocol or is not exposure dentin we are enamel we here we was only in enamel <coughs> i like adhesive only for enamel <coughs> because in a one bottle you have uh, like a dentin primer and also you have their adhesive and I think it doesn't make sense if I have a only enamel surface to use uh, to use uh, dentin primer inside the bottle adhesive and uh, preheated composite okay uh, thank you now we have Patricia Cunha from Brazil She's a mentor, also a professor in our Dental Academy live. Patricia, please make your question. Welcome, darling. Hello, how, how are you people? It was a great presentation. Thank you Thank very you. much. And I would like to know which uh, light cure unit did you use for the 10 seconds um, technique? Which light curing? It's from, I forgot the name, it's from, it's, Op, I guess Optilux from Care Company. Okay. Did you use just one, or did you try another uh, another type of light curing? We are always using two in a in a like to, uh, com, uh, like uh, contra contra with two two light curing and like rotate. We are not able to go to a proximal part, but we are only circulated around okay but, but this gel stage this gel stage is uh like influence influ mm -hmm. influence a lot of the how to gap is big mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Which, which dual cure material you will use and to which curing clamp you will use and which instrument you will use for removing the gel stage a lot of things a lot of things uh, influence that yeah, yeah, in this research, we try to use like just five different types and evaluate which one, which protocol is the best one. Yes, personally, I don't use the, the, the pre-gel technique, but it, it was a 
a big gap there. <laughs> so Absolutely. I I'm totally I totally totally agree with you, and that's why I'm showing this part here because what I know that a lot of dentists still using this pre gel removing, and it's really yeah. it's really pretty dangerous. Thank, thank you, you very much. Patricia. Thank you, darling. Obrigado, Gaúcha. Beijo. Uh, doctor, <laughs> next question we have from Bianca. What, what, what material do you use for cementation? How did you prepare the inside surface of the composite veneer? Is the addition to the middle composite good enough? Yeah, it's absolutely, it's absolutely good enough because we like uh, I already already answered the question. We are using sandblaster. Uh, 27 microns, uh, the silica, we are sandblasting, then we are like using, uh, uh, we are like the, the cleaning the surface uh, and the using the slime, like the protocol, and the same like uh, the, comp uh, like a ceramic, but it's unageable, that means we have to use, uh, we have to use the sandblasting. And yeah, in this case, the veneer I have used the preheated composite already answered. Okay, okay. Uh, guys, uh, unfortunately, uh, we passed half an hour already. So we still have a lot of questions. We have still, we still have 15 questions, so, so many questions. Um, uh, may I ask Dr. Conquella, can I send you the, all the questions for you and we can answer the guys for, for email? Is that okay for you? Sure, but we can. We can we can uh, we can go through the few question. If I don't know if we can we can continue a bit. It's, it's up to you. Yeah, I'm 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 okay, but my wife okay. is still not here. When <laughs> he when she coming, we have to stop immediately. Yeah, exactly. That, that's the point. Uh, let's take you more know, two happy or two wife, questions. Happy wife. Happy life. <laughs> okay, let's take two more. Yes. Okay, for Marco Martigoni, thanks for the lecture. Can you can we know spatial parameters for the non prep veneer? Yes, this that one was 60, uh, 60, yeah, 60 microns for this non prep. But there is a, another another things uh, used uh, or non used the veneer mode. And uh, these things influence more because if you are not like uh, unblocking, unblocking uh, this uh, undercuts in a milling strategy, you will never fit uh, this thin restoration well. Uh, with the, if I have a choice, I always prefer to use uh, M65 milling unit. Uh, and the mill, the restoration from discs, because you can better define and remove the undercuts inside. But it's about the most important thing is this used veneer mode or non veneer mode. And look at after design of your restoration, like proposal of the design, look at inside and control if there is all the surface like the visible, because sometimes. It's uh, it's like blocked, and uh, this is this is the problem. But the spacer for this, uh, like the mock-up veneer, we use very thin because I have used for uh, like this temporary bonding only uh, the flow composite, and it's it's almost nothing. Also depends on how sharp the margin is because if the mar margin edge. Uh, inside, sorry, incisal edge is very sharp. It, this is sometimes the problem to fit non-prep veneer the restoration. And you have to check if the veneer mode is switched on. And if the, the patient has the, these really sharp incisal edge, sometimes we have to like the manually increase like this, uh, remove the margin and increase to deep because a uh, regular instrument can go inside, but it's only in a case if it's non-prep veneer. If it's a prep, we avoid all the sharp edges and to do really rounded smoothing material, uh, preparation, sorry. Okay. 
so uh, I think the the last question is not a question. It's basically a uh, uh, an affirmation, basically uh, from Dr. Uh, Hakuladvani. Basically, we have to make more polished surfs during tooth preparation. Yes, you can, you can, but depends on if you are in a, an emo or in a dentin, you know, because these two different surfaces and uh, if you will like the polish too much dentin is contraproductive because there is a lot of uh, the smear layer you have to remove or reduce the smear layer. You can well polish the enamel, you can polish with the discs, with the different cores of the disc and you can play as much as you want if you are enamel. If it's exposure dentin, I think it's another story and we have to do immediate dentin sealing. And uh, if you not polished too much dentin, it's better because the roughness of the dentin better absorb <laughs> to the molding uh, inside. And thanks to like uh, removing hybrid layer with, uh, uh, with the glycerin gel, like uh, air blocker, then after that you will have the very smooth, very smooth surface if you will seal the dentin with Im immediate dental sealing. But really it's, it's a different, two different workflow. If I'm enamel, I'm used disc, I'm not stopping with the, with this red instrument, especially the corners, I'm shaping the corners of anterior teeth with the disc, sure. But uh, yeah, in this case, we evaluated mainly margin because this is where the restoration is in a contact with, with the margin. The, the smoothest and very round restoration increase the fitting. But how look the margin is there is a, the chipping or a course is or there is a, any, any, only like uh, the gap. This is responsible for the, the margin line preparation. But sure, if it's spacer too, too, too low and there are sharp edges, you can't fit the restoration on the right place. But that's why we use in this experiment always the same, same tooth for same restoration, for all the same restoration, we use the same tooth uh, to, be, to be fair to each material and to each molecule. Okay, so uh, Dr. Uh, Ali, uh, do you think there is a difference between regular Emacs blocks, wet milling, and the new material that's for dry milling with zirconia? Would it give less chipping? Ali? Yeah, yeah, there's, there's a huge difference. There's a huge difference. Yeah, this. I think it, the worst things if you prep with uh, the coarse instrument like uh, the green or black and to use uh, this lithium desilicate over. You have chipping on a margin, those tooth margin and you have chipping on the restoration. And this is like the worst combination. Uh, from, uh, from Baris, a man thinks your lecture is always full of informative and the excellence Excellence. Uh, greats from Istanbul, are there an, an advantage extra fine grind mode for fitting the veneer restorations? Uh, any extra fine grinding for fitting the veneer? Of, of course, of course, all this extra fine, all this extra fine, uh, the process the, like increase uh, internal and external surface and yeah, the sure is uh, it's uh, like a little bit time consuming. Like I have <coughs> mentioned before, I prefer to invest time for this extra fine, extra fine the process better than a speed process because this extra fine process is more gentle the preparation, uh, the margin, and you have more instruments, more choice instruments for the preparation beautiful occlusal surface that if I can is always recommend or oh, we are always going through extra fine link process. Okay and now to close with a golden question we have uh, Dr. Lino Dolph. Dr. Lino Dolph are you there? 
Lino is dental technician. It's, ve it's a, one of the best. Yes, yeah, so I'm sorry. Lino, Hi, Lino, are you there? <laughs> are you alive, man? Would you like to do your question live? Him? I, I don't mean. Can you hear me? Yes, you can hear. Welcome. Hi, Thank Jeff. you so much. Hi, Joseph. How are you doing? You well? Great Hi, lecture. Lino. Hi, Lino. How are you? No, I'm great. Great lecture. Really, I really appreciate it. That it was really nice, very informative. There. I've got a quick question for you, Joseph. Um, yes. In regards to your non prep veneers, right? Where, yes. in terms of the cement space, you had mentioned 60 microns, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but in terms of the viscosity of uh, your adhesive cement, right? The viscosity is about 80 microns. Do you say, yeah. do you think that 80, 60 microns is sufficient? Uh, the 60 was for this um, the mock up veneers. And oh, okay. You, the flow composite for the for the diluting with preheated composite the 80 is minimum better 100 maybe 120 120 but this 100 120 we are using for inlays onlays and like 100 or 90 or 80 depends on depends on how sharp is uh, the edge for veneers no, it's fine. I just wanted to clarify that because I was a bit confused. Yes. So hence yes. my question. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, guys. No, thank you, Joseph. Guys, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Kunkela. Uh, thank you for a great, great uh, class. Uh, Dani, uh, Leandro, thank you for your support. And Lino, Patricia, all the guys. I would you like to thank you for everyone around the world that participate today. Uh, we have a person for Ninja. Uh, uh, Czech Republic, Abu Dhabi, Dubai, Iraq, uh, uh, Mexico, Spain, UK, US, Argentina, Uruguay, Paraguay, Chile, Brazil, Mexico, oh, so many countries. I'm sorry if I forgot uh, uh, any country, but it was so special. Doctor, it's so words now. Thank you. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Uh, do not forget, tomorrow I have one more class with Dr. Leandro and the project uh, Dance Web class continues and we'll see you next time. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye, everyone. Okay, Thank bye, you. Bye. 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 Bye.